Hello everyone, I'm at home and I'm going to try and read lots of stories to you today. So if you want to listen to more stories over Christmas, you can. And you might have noticed I'm by my Christmas tree. So the book will be covering the tree when I get reading, but I wonder what decorations you can spot. Maybe if I've got time at the end, I'll show you some of my favourites. But before that, let's introduce the book. So the story we've had this week is called Threadbare and it's by Mick Inkpen. And we've been talking about what that means when we say if something is threadbare. And we've been looking at the teddy and talking about all of the different features, how he's a bit old, his fabric's worn down, he's got some loose bits where some of it's coming out. And it's quite a long story. I've noticed that Mick Inkpen loves writing long stories. So I might read, I might try and read quite quickly. I think you need to go and get a teddy for this story. And actually, this is funny. I haven't got a teddy, but this is my Christmas elf. Look, there she is. She's saying hi. But yeah, get cosy, hug a teddy and enjoy the story. Okay. Ben's bear was called Threadbear. He was old. Bits of him had worn out or worked loose or dropped off. He had a paw which didn't match and a button for an eye. When he looked through the button, he saw four pictures instead of one. It was like looking in a television shop window, but there was one thing that had always been wrong with Threadbear. The man who had made him had put too much stuffing inside him. His arms were too hard. His legs were too hard. And there was so much stuffing inside his tummy that his squeaker had been squashed. It never squeaked, not even once. Threadbear hated having a squeaker in his tummy that wouldn't speak. It made him feel that he was letting Ben down. Ben's frog could croak, his space monster could squelch, and his electronic robot could burble away for hours if its batteries were the right way round. Even the little toy that Ben called Grey Thing could make a noise. And nobody knew what Grey Thing was meant to be. We've been looking at all the different toys, all the different features they've got. Nobody could make Threadbare's squeaker work. Ben's dad couldn't do it. His mom couldn't do it. Nor could his auntie or his grandma. Nor could any of his friends. They're all trying different ways to get that air to squash and the squeak sound to happen. But there's too much stuffing inside. He's too full. When Ben had measles, he asked the doctor about Threadbare's squeaker. The doctor listened to Threadbare's tummy, but there was no squeak, not even the faintest sign of one. The other toys tried to help. If you had a winder like me, we could wind you up, said Frog. If you were made of rubber like me, we could squelch you, said the space monster. And if you had batteries like me, we could turn you on, said the robot. It was not much help. Why don't you ask Father Christmas, said Grey Thing. He knows all about toys. This was a brilliant idea and Grey Thing went a little pink. But where does Father Christmas live, asked Threadbare. At a place called the North Pole, said Grey Thing. You can get to it up the chimney, I think. Hmm, we were learning about polar regions, weren't we? I don't think it is up the chimney. Let's have a look. Threadbare had never climbed up a chimney before. It was hard work. He took a wrong turn and fell back down, but he did not give up. It was long after bedtime when Threadbare poked his head out of the chimney pot. This must be the North Pole, he thought. This is just like the story Whatever Next, which we'll read in the summer. Threadbare sat down to wait for Father Christmas. He waited and waited, but... Father Christmas did not seem to be coming. The moon rose into the sky and Threadbare began to doze. Suddenly, Father Christmas was there helping Threadbare into his sleigh. Wow. They flew over the top of the world and onto the land where the squeaker trees grow. And Threadbare could hear the squeaker trees as they came into land. 
wonder what they sound like, like squeak, squeak. Look, we've got a fold out here. Wow, it's so long. You must eat the biggest squeak of fruit, said Father Christmas. It tasted delicious, but it made Threadbare feel so sleepy. Threadbare felt himself falling and falling. Look, the squeak of fruit is very messy and juicy. It reminds me of a plum. It's that very dark purple shade. Bump! Threadbare woke up. Oh, I wonder if this was all a dream. He rubbed his eyes and looked around. There was no squeaker fruit, no squeaker tree, and worst of all, no Father Christmas. I must have fallen asleep and dropped off the North Pole, said Threadbare. It's going to be very dirty, isn't he? I saw he was covered in soot from the chimney. In the morning, Ben was surprised to find Threadbare in the garden covered with soot. Ben's mom put Threadbare straight into the washing machine. She did not even look at the label on Threadbare's neck, which read in capital letters, do not wash. Sometimes we have to wash the teddies at home, don't we? When Threadbare came out of the washing machine, the soot was gone. But there was a curious, ah, a curious purple stain on his chin, which nobody could explain. Threadbare was feeling too giddy. We talked about what this means when we're spinning and we're dizzy. And his head felt like a spinning top. So even though he's nice and clean, all the soot's come off. He's still got that purple stain. So maybe it wasn't a dream. Maybe he did eat the squeaker fruit. I don't mind feeling giddy, thought Threadbare as he hung on the line. I don't mind having a button for an eye and a paw that doesn't match. I don't even mind being hung up by the ear. But I do mind. What I mind very much is having a silly squeaker in my tummy that won't squeak. Threadbare was so cross that he frightened a robin. It flew away, leaving him alone in the garden, bouncing angry little bounces on the washing line. Look, you see all the water dripping out of him. The sun rose slowly over the garden. It shone straight down on Threadbare and a great warm shine like an enormous hug. It was like a great warm, sorry, it shone straight down on Threadbare, a great warm shine like an enormous hug. Threadbare began to steam. That's when all the water's coming out. He felt much better and the more he steamed, the better he felt. He swung his legs backwards and forwards and he kicked them high in the air. Soon he was swinging around and around the washing line, giggling to himself. Why do I feel so happy, he wondered. I wonder if you can remember. It was at this moment that Threadbare realised a very odd thing had happened to him. His paws felt different and so did his arms and his legs. They were no longer hard and inside his tummy was a wonderful, loose, comfortable feeling that he had never felt before. At the very same moment, something caught Threadbare's eye. Something red was racing across the sun and to Threadbare's surprise, the red something was waving goodbye. It was Santa Claus, I knew it. How amazing. And when Ben came out to see it, if Threadbare was dry, he noticed that his little brown bear had changed. Look, Mom, said Ben, he's gone floppy. Ben's mom and pegged Threadbare's ear. Oh dear, she said, his stuffing must have shrunk in the wash. Ben looked at Threadbare. Oh, I like him like that. It makes him look... But Ben could not think of the right word. So he, instead, he gave Threadbare a big squeeze. And for the first time, the squeaker in Threadbare's tummy gave the loudest, clearest, squeakiest squeak. And do you remember, this has got a squeak in it, but it's a bit broken. Shall I pretend to do it again? So, pretend <laughs> I wonder what squeaky noise you can make. Oh, look how happy he is at the end. The end. So that was our Threadbare story. So I'm just thinking if I've got a teddy bear on my tree, and I do, you're going to love this. I'll be very careful getting it off. But I'm sure the grown-ups 
will remember these characters. So this was mine when I was a little girl. Um, she's a forever friends bear and she's made of wood actually um, from the 1990s. She's one of my favourite decorations. Okay, bye-bye.